Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good. I just want to invite you to stand. We're going to sing some songs to the Lord and worship. My name's Brian. I'm really excited to be here with you guys today. Thank you, Pastor Steve. I'll pray for us. Lord, we just invite you. We just open up our hearts this morning. Just pray, God, that you would fill this place. Holy Spirit, fill this room. We pray for a fresh infilling, a new experience with you today. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Sing when you walk. When you walk into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. When you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. Cause nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. We love to worship you, Jesus. Sing, we love you. We love you. And we'll never stop. We can't live without you, Jesus. We love you. We can't get enough. All this is for you, Jesus. When you walk, you walk into the room, sickness starts to vanish, every hopeless situation ceases to exist. When you walk into the room, the dead begin to rise, cause there is resurrection life in all you. Jesus, we love 
do whatever you want to, whatever you want to, and I will make room for you. Do whatever you want to, whatever you want to. Can we do that this morning? Can we let this move past just lyrics that we're singing, but a heart posture? Kiddos, God wants to minister to you today. He wants to love on you today. He sees you and he loves you. He's so proud of you, who you are. All of us as we bring our, our whole selves to him. He loves it. He loves these moments. I'm convinced as a mom, I know what it feels like. I'm convinced that God feels the same way even more than I do when all of my kids come running to me. God feels that way in these moments. He looks forward to these moments. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Let God love on you today. Let him love on you. Let him do it. Don't push back on him. Let him do it. He wants to. As we take communion, let him love on you. Don't just take the bread and dip it in the juice and, okay, I did that part. And I'm going to go get into the routine of I know the things that we're going to do today. No, let him love on you. What does that mean? What does it mean that Jesus came? Don't get past that. Don't let it get old. Jesus came. Let him love on you as you take communion. As we've given, maybe some of us have already given already, or maybe through this next week we're going to be giving our tithes and offerings. Come on, can we let God love on us? Let him come and be a part of it. Minister to our hearts today. Maybe you need prayer. We've got our prayer team in the back. They've got the lanyards on. They would love to minister to you. Maybe you need a tangible moment where someone just grabs hands with you. And you can feel the love of God. Come on, can we let God love on us today? As we go through this next song, we can do any of those things. We can continue to worship him through singing, take communion. You can do it with a friend, maybe your family, maybe just sometimes, sometimes we just need to go on our own. Maybe you need that today. Maybe you need prayer, whatever it is. However, to posture ourselves to make room for him, in doing so, we're making room for love because that's who he is. So let's let him do what he does best. Lighten the burden. Prepare us for this next week. Father, we just thank you for who you are. We just go ahead and repent. Any moments this last week, I put myself in the driver's seat in a sense, trying to figure out how to do stuff and seeing I can't do it. God, I repent of those moments, and I once again declare that you are God, and you're good, and you're faithful. You're my provider. We bring our tithes and offerings to you today, God. And we do it with a generous, generous heart, happy to do it. And we thank you for your promises that are on the other side of that. As we bring our request to you, God, I ask that your tangible love would be right there in the midst of it. And as we take communion, the revelation of what that represents would just let love penetrate our hearts once again. We thank you for it. We thank you for what you want to do today. We go ahead and say yes to it, God. In Jesus' name. Come on, church. Let's let love reign in this moment as we worship him. All the saints and angels, they bow 
before the Lamb of God and sing. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things and to you are all things. You deserve the glory you're worthy you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory
Just sing this one more time. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Let's just lift up praise and worship to the Lord right now. You deserve the glory, Lord. We lift you up, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being with us today. We love you. Help us to love you with our whole hearts. And as we move forward into this service, God, help us to, to hear your words and be changed. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Man, wow. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap on that. We just had some church up in here. It's good. What a junior. Come on. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Holy Spirit's moving. He wants to work in and through this moment in our lives. And we're going to take just a couple minutes. Uh, go ahead and join us. Let's welcome those joining us online. We're so glad wherever you are in the world tuning in. We're going to take a few minutes here in-house. We're going to dismiss our kids. Head to the back to your uh, kids' leaders. Come on, give the kids a hand clap. To head back there for sure. And then let's take just a couple minutes. Introduce yourself to someone. Give somebody a hug. Tell me you love them. Good to see you in the house. Let's take a few minutes here. Good morning, and welcome to Highway Community Church. If we haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, my name is Derek, and I'm one of the Dream Team members here at Highway. Our desire is to be a life-giving church in Northwest Denver, where you're known by others, the Holy Spirit is experienced, and each of us are challenged to become more engaged followers of Jesus. If you're a guest here today, thank you for taking the time to fill out a Connect card. We understand that visiting a church for the first time can come with a little anxiety, so it means a lot to us that you're here. Welcome home. No matter where you are in the journey, if you want to go deeper in your spiritual growth, we encourage you to check out our church website at highwaycommunity.com for the welcome information, on ramp videos, blogs, events, and life group details. So now that we've experienced God's presence this morning in worship, let's prepare our hearts to receive from His Word today. If you have the YouVersion Bible app on your phone, feel free to look up today's service on the events tab and follow along with the notes provided. Let's watch this quick video and welcome today's speaker.
good, that's good, that's good. Come on, welcome Highway. Don't miss the moment. I should have probably titled today. I don't know, maybe one of the next messages will be that. Watching that video just got me again. Don't miss the moment for sure. Man, Brian, thanks for being here, leading us in worship today. Oh, that was so good, so good, so good. Yeah, let's go ahead and give a little hand clap again. Uh, I wanted to say on behalf of our family, thank you guys last week for the blessings of the Pastor Appreciation Sunday. Uh, man, it's just, it just means a lot, all the cards and the gifts and all that. So thank you. I know uh, as pastors here, we definitely do appreciate being appreciated. Who doesn't? You know what I'm saying? So uh, thanks again for all y'all did last week. It was good to even unhook, take a break uh, for a trip, and then have Tredessa's parents and minister last week wrap up our parenting series. Uh, but today we are kicking off a three weeks in uh, oh, marriage series. I said it wrong. Parenting we're kicking off today. All right? Y'all know what I'm saying. I, even if I don't, you know what I'm saying. So uh, I, I'm really excited to jump into this. Really, it's six weeks in relationships, and, and obviously, uh, no matter where you are in the journey, you know, it's like we said for, you know, you singles during the, the uh, marriage uh, series, there's relational concepts, but here's the deal. It just kind of hit me during worship. All of you are kids, and you got a, you got a dad who's an amazing dad, and I can guarantee you through this, there's going to be some things that Holy Spirit just stops and puts a pin in for you to, to stop and think about analyze, process how God's been a parent to you in your journey. Maybe um, through this, uh, you, you might have some things stirred up that, uh, you know, your parents, man, you wish you had, fill in the blank. And, and I get that. Sometimes we, we have to process those and praise God. Holy Spirit's with us in the journey, right? He's our helper in the journey, and we don't have to do it alone. So I guarantee you, come on, whether you're a parent, grandparent, you know, foster parent, uh, I mean, here's, here's a, a, a thought just leading into the crazy, I mean, it feels like fall. I, I don't know about this week for you, it felt like fall. Uh, so that seasons change, well, we've got Hope and Home, who is a foster care ministry that uses our facility every month. They, uh, they, they're the ones we do the toy drive through in December. We got that lined up this week. So uh, crazy enough, next month, we'll be talking to you again uh, about that leading into the holiday season. Um, so no matter where you are, you get, it's, it's, a, it's a massive responsibility. It is a powerful weight that can come on you when you are carrying the, the future of a child. However you look at it, uh, you know, when you are looking at their future, it was on the trip to uh, Florida, coming back, it was just interesting because it caught my attention probably because I've been thinking about parenting and, and uh, you know, we've, you know, journeyed through parenting ourselves, and I'll allude to that some more, but watching on the plane back, it's just sometimes you get those planes where it's just a lot of little kids. And uh, it wasn't like a school group or a team or something like that. It was just a lot of parents with a lot of little kids. And they were processing. And this, this family, uh, the, the people uh, doing the ticketing messed up because this is an underage. And they put them by themselves. And, you know, having to work through all the dynamics. We left a little late because they had to figure out all the kid and parent dynamics and get them all. And, like, right where we are, I, I stood up and I just looked. And there's, like, kids just everywhere and, and I'm talking about when we got to, uh, the, we landed back in Denver, and I just thought, I just took a moment, and I looked at the parents' faces. <laughs> parents, you know, come on, let's just like, well, let's put up some pictures. I mean, when you see parents traveling airports, parenting's just hard. It's just hard. We all need help. Amen, parents? We just need help. I mean, there's diapers, tempers, arguing, education, permits, sports. I mean, like, how do you go down the list of all that's required in parenting to navigate with our kids? And come on, kids, if you're in the room, your parents, just the fact that you're still alive, they love you some, at least some, because they didn't kill you along the way, all right? So at least some. Uh, but where do we turn? As parents, where do we turn for guidance? You know, I don't know about your college experience. Ours, being at a Bible college, we actually had classes about parenting. Most people don't ever hear anything about parenting. Now they just got a kid. Now what do I do? You know, I mean, you talk about where do you turn? Because every good parent, not every parent, but every good parent wants their child to be a success in this world. They, they want them to be equipped to face the challenges because we know every day we all face challenges. There's things that just come up. And so if you're new in the journey with us, just to get to know Miss and I a little bit uh, more. So we've been married 25 years. We have uh, raised three kids, Derek being our middle 21-year-old. Our, our youngest is 19. She's out in Alabama at Bible College uh, in, her, in the worship school there at the Ramp University. Our oldest 24-year-old 
uh, son is in Atlanta. He's a sound engineer, uh, loving life, living his dream, all that good stuff. Got a great relationship. Future potential Crowder. We'll see, you know, uh, if all that works out and all that. Uh, she's awesome. We love her. But uh, this is where we're at. And for us in the journey, we have pastored now here at this church, including launch season, 16 years. And then we were pastors in Arkansas, youth pastors, college pastors, associate pastors. We worked with men's ministry, women's ministry. We have been in ministry over two decades, going on three decades now of ministry. So the amount of time we have spent in counseling sessions, working through things, working through things ourselves with kids. So here's the thing, as I minister the next three, this and next two weeks, I'm, I'm talking for us. Some of y'all have been in our journey long enough, you've actually heard some of the things I'm going to say come out of Missy's mouth as she's taught as well. And for us, there's just an experience that we've had that we want to share with you, if we can do that. If we can just give you, this is our experience. This is what we learned. This is what worked. And this is what didn't work along the way, all right? Because we've had both. Some of you in the journey could sit there and like, wow, look at their kids. Oh, they just got lucky. <laughs> We're going to talk about what lucky is, you know? It, you just don't have kids arrive at adulthood being successful, loving God, loving the church, still loving people without doing some things right, and so that's all I want to share right out of the gate is first and foremost, Missy and I, as I share, we are not perfect. You, we at least have one in the room that can testify if you are questioning that. Afterwards, just go ask Derek, really, are they perfect? He will quickly say, I love them, but no, they are not perfect. And uh, hang on, let me fix this. It keeps slipping here. I think uh, I need to adjust just a little bit. I don't want any distraction along the way. Um, but what we did at the Bible college, what we did right, I'll say this way, at the Bible college is we saw, and I said this a few weeks ago in the marriage, we leaned into seeing a family dynamic we wanted. I mean, even as we started just dating, conversations we would have, when we got a little serious with it and that love word started coming out, like, like we very much started talking in our family life classes, the position of a husband, a wife, a parent, a, a father, a mother, like we dove into discussions and papers and topics and talking, but we saw a family that we wanted to have what they had. And I've got some, uh, some books up here. Now, this is a book we give in all our, um, our, our child dedications to so some of you new families. If you are in the journey and you have not dedicated your kids and you want to do that, that's something we'll just give you free. But I've put a few on either side. It's just a simple little booklet. I mean, you could probably read it if you didn't have other things to do. You could read it on a day. I mean, easily. And we're going to talk a lot more about what's in here, um, especially week three and two more weeks. But it's there. Uh, you can give online. Take it today. I'm just going to say, uh, I, don't, I don't know how much we spend on them, but say 10 bucks. you know, 5 to $10. If you can do it. If you don't have 5 or $10, just take it, and we got more in the office, okay? Because um, we use those two so into parenting because we, your pastors, believe in what is in that book. Now, what we teach over these next three weeks or what you read in the book, uh, you got to decide whether you want to do it or not. I mean, it, it's like the word. I mean, we can teach all day long. You've got to decide to apply it. I mean, James says you can, you can trick yourself, you can fool yourself. The book of James, uh, I'm not talking about a production guy back there. James always says you can fool yourself. Yeah, like, like you can trick yourself to thinking, okay, I can do this. And we just heard it, but we didn't apply it. And so I'm going to really encourage you to dive into applying some things in the journey. But here's the things, I, I, two things before I'm out of the gate, I've got to start with. First and foremost, right here, right, right here. All right, so everybody look at me. Don't get offended or condemned. Don't get offended or condemned. And the second thing is stay teachable. Because we're in a journey, we have different ages. Man, any of you parents have more than one kid, you know there, you, you, there's just not one, one formula to raise every kid. I mean, you got special needs, you got mental health, you got, I mean, blended families, so you're a stepfather, stepmother, like, like, I could stand up here, I'm just giving you our experience, which is unique in itself, you're going to have to figure out the points that apply and how to apply it, y'all good with that? So, here's the thing, don't get offended and don't get condemned, 
Don't do it. Don't let yourself go there. So if you're going to be teachable, don't say this if you're not going to be teachable. I want to grow. God, you have more. I want to know it. Come on, because when raising kids, where do you turn? Where do you go? And here's the challenge. The Bible should be our, like, just chock full resource of great parenting. Problem is, most family dynamics in the Bible are messed up. I mean, at the bare minimal, they're dysfunctional. At the worst, that they are horrible. I mean, the story, I just, I mean, you, you think about what's going on in the Middle East, that's, that's family dysfunction in the Bible. That's right now, going back to Abraham and him doing what he and Sarah thought they should do to fix the problem. Like, that's where that started from. Family feuds, still in existence today. So when you look at the Bible, here's the thing we can lean into. There are biblical principles that apply. Apply to you in your own personal journey. Apply to parenting. There are scriptures that, especially, we, we've done a whole summer in Proverbs. And here's the thing. It will challenge you, parents, whether, you know, we, oh, I believe the Bible. Uh, you know, we can hit a few key verses and quickly find out whether that is accurate or not. Well, I believe it except for that verse. I don't, I don't think we do that in this culture in parenting now. Like, again, I'm going to push on a lot of buttons. I might push over some sacred cows. I'm going to just tell you, you're going to have to decide what do you believe. And parents that are currently in this realm of parenting, are you getting the job done? That's what you've got to decide. Because if you're not, listen, the Holy Spirit will give you just a seed, just a, a thought of something you can tweak, something you can change, something that can make it better. Because then, I mean, you're, you're, you know, here's, here's uh, you know, Baby Oakley back there, before you know it, I'm sorry to say, he's going to be like 10. I mean, your kids, you're like, this sweet little baby is now going through puberty, and we're talking about periods. Like, what in the world? Where did this come from? We're sending out graduation invitations. Like, what just happened? And you're wondering the whole journey, are they ready for adulthood? Are they ready to cope with life and all that life throws at? Because there is a 99.9 .9 chance that you forgot to teach them something in that 18 years. There's just a good chance that you miss something along the way. Because I'm going to just venture to say none of you had perfect parents. I love my parents. They watch every service. I love, but they would recognize they're not perfect either. For, for us and parents that are imperfect, good or bad, we seed ourselves into our kids over the years. Good, bad, indifferent, I mean like present, not present. You, we seed ourselves and some of us, many of us, some of us, you know, Holy Spirit's done a work, come on. Again, you can't live the rest of your life being a victim. You can't uh, all the time put the blame back on because now you're an adult and you got to decide some adult decisions. You got to go to the Holy Spirit and get some Holy Spirit help and healing. Like you can't live under that, but many of us are still wrestling out the byproducts of how we were parented along the way. Man, some of you, I guarantee in the room, have made, like, you might have. Publicly said it, you might have just thought it. Man, I will never be like them. I'll never say that. I'll never do that to my kids. It's interesting, two truths that Pastor Andy Stanley says about parenting. First is, just because I have a parent doesn't mean I know anything about being one. I agree with that statement. The second is, just because I was a kid doesn't mean I know anything about raising one. When you look at parenting, it's such a challenge, but I want to go to some scripture to kind of lay out the precedence for what we're going to unpack. Exodus 25, verse 9, God talking to Moses on the mountain, giving instruction, Moses relaying instruction to the people. According to all that I show you, God's saying, that is the pattern. Say the pattern. The pattern of the tabernacle, the pattern of all its furnishings, just so shall you make it. So again, say a pattern. Pattern. See, God knows the unique pattern of parenting your child needs. Just start at that premise. Like, like God knows he formed while you were yet in your mother's womb, God formed you. God knows the pattern that you 
as a parent, need to utilize to raise your kids. And, and I'll talk about it. I, you, you've heard, if you've been here any length of time, you've heard me talk about the, the, the law of thermodynamics, the law of motion, the, the law of entropy. Everything tends from order to chaos. And you're going to find parenting is the same thing. Peace does not just happen randomly. <laughs> That's it. I mean, if it does, you're like, what are they into now? I mean, you know, peace does just not happen accidentally. It's No, 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 no. It, it, it all tends from order. Everything in the world tends from order to chaos. I mean, everything. There's not anything exempt that doesn't require you being intentional to bring order to it, to the outcome. Titus 2, 7 kind of says, in everything, set an example of doing what is good. And that's parenting. Set the example. So as we're talking about parenting, come on, more than anything, you are setting the example for your kid. This is what it looks like to be a man of God. This is what it looks like to be a woman of God. This is what it looks like to function in relationships, how to navigate pain, how to process a, a hurt and, and betrayal. Like, like we're all the time we are teaching as we're going to find out. So we're going to talk about having children in the home and your relationship to them as a parent. How do we bring order out of chaos? Because you can have chaos and have one kid. You can have chaos and have 10 kids. Like, like, it's not about just the amount, the age. Like, you've got to determine what does it look like to be a good parent to produce kids that are ready to contribute to society. When, when that child, when Ben, come, come here, Ben. When Ben puts on that robe, how old are you now, Ben? 11. 11. You're almost there. I'm sorry, Mom. Uh, when he puts on that robe and that, that weird-looking cap, anybody know what it's called? Mortarboard. Why is it called a mortarboard? Because in masonry, that is the board that they use to build a wall with and put bricks. What we're saying when we put that funky looking hat on is that this kid, now a young man, is ready to be a builder of society. That, that's, it's not just something to decorate for you know, creativity purposes. It's the, the point that now he... From 10, now 18 or 17 or 19 or what, he is ready to become a builder of society. He, we are launching him out to build something successful. Yeah, give me five. Hey, take, take, take a slow time on those next eight years, all right? All right. So in the process, good parenting, you, you ask a ton of questions, right, parents? You, all the time, whether it's internal, whether it's to a spouse, whether it's to a friend of your single parent, uh, how can I be sure my child will grow up right? Uh, how do I get my spouse to get on the same page with me in raising this child? How do I overcome this frustrations I'm feeling Right now, I've got teenagers. Am I too late? Are they too far gone? Like, I mean, we are asking questions. What do I do if I have all these the special needs? A single parent, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm wrestling with issues with my ex. I mean, like, there's so many variables that come into this. And hopefully, the feel is if I just do enough good. It's like some people in their religious approach to heaven. Like, if I just do enough good. Like, like parenting, if, if I just have seeded enough good things, maybe, just maybe, it'll turn out okay. What do I do with my grown kids now out of the house and I'm in intention with them? What about my grandkids? My, my kids won't let me see them. I mean, we, we wrestle with so many layers, and all I'm going to start with today is that there's a God-given pattern that the Holy Spirit wants to breathe into your unique situation with each child. Come on, when you start processing, you've got kids in different age brackets and the way you've got to relate and talk and, 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 and produce parenting differently based off each child. Here's, here's the, the thing, the concept we're really going to dive into and a great example is, is like sculpture and art, but I'm going to use wood as an example. They're just going to put a few pictures up here as I'm talking. See, every hand sculpted art is unique into itself. It's a one of a kind. I mean, a tree trunk or a log can produce art or it can become rotten wood. It depends on what hands have, have, have been placed on it, what unique giftings have been formed out of it. I, I like it. It's in the same concept as the way the artist, well-known artist Michelangelo said this. And many of y'all heard this quote. I saw the angel in the marble and I carved until I set him free. 
That's parenting. When we start looking at this idea, and again, I want to go back to what I said, the very first thing, because we start talking about parenting, it's so easy, like so many of things, to get in the comparison trap. And, and I'll tell you right now, Scripture, that is a principle, tells you, you do that, you're unwise. Well, if I just, if they have this, and I, I, I would just, they're, they're unique situation. Come on, if you're getting in the comparison trap, you're going to whip yourself with the word. See, that's what too often we, we get into a mode and we're teaching something, and I'm going to really dive deep into this next week. I'm going to talk about the difference between the, the ideal and the real. And here's the tension of the gospel. Here's the tension of life, because when we have the real, we don't want to hear the ideal, because this is our reality. And I want to dive deep into that because it applies to so many of our journeys next week. You got to come back next week. I'm going to teach it now. But I've been getting ready for all three weeks uh, this past month. So the Bible tells us, and you've got to lean heavy into this, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And you can sit here again and lean in and take notes and I want to learn, or you can let word, experience, principles whip you and cause you to condemn yourself. See, the word's not ever going to condemn you, but you can condemn yourself or let the enemy, the accuser of the brethren, condemn you and defeat you as a parent. And you can either stay home, not come back, or you can leave here frustrated every week, or you can be like... Praise God, I got a new day. I'm going to learn. I'm going to start from here. It's up to you. It's up to you or watching online how you're going to receive when we talk into this topic. Because when it comes to the truth, every one of us have and will continue to make mistakes. None of us have arrived. None of us are perfect. Your parents weren't. You aren't. You guys that will be future parents, you never will be. And that's what we've got to start and look at. And you can live the rest of your life with regrets. The woulda, coulda, shoulda. And I can testify. I've had heart to hearts with my kids. Some of my greatest regrets as a, as a, a human being are in our parenting. Because there's some seasons I got right. Other seasons I missed it. And I've publicly, in, 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 in our relationships, rebuilt things, worked towards not missing moments because I just got to be honest, I pour more of my attention in some seasons of this church to trying to keep a church together and growing than I did. And I miss some moments with my kids. I don't ever get those back. So when I'm talking about parenting, I'm going to give you the transparent, here's what we did right, here's what we did wrong. Because you can get to that place and they're out of the house. You don't ever get that season back. You don't. You can miss the moment or you can embrace what God has in the season. I'm going to tell you right now, the Holy Spirit has anointed you as a parent for this season. You can handle this season. You can process what's going on, the chaos, the frustration. I can't have one more talk with that kid. I can't discipline one more time. You got to get home. You got to talk to him. I'm fed up. Like, like you, you are graced for this season. You can do this. And it can be hard, it can be painful, but I'm telling you, come on, Chris, you're graced for this season. You're graced for that next one coming, and y'all got like 100 kids. Like, you're graced for that season, and all of us will keep praying for you. Like, like you're graced for that season. So what you got to do? You've got to lean in. What am I going to learn now that will help me moving forward? Or you can leave beat up, frustrated, thinking about all the things you should have, would have, could have done. And I get it. And I get it. You can live there or we can build something for future. Because when it comes to parenting, I don't know if there's another thing on the planet that's more fulfilling and more challenging. I mean, maybe next to a good marriage. But, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, like the amount of energy and love and passion and pain that go into that journey as a parent but here's the thing, and I'm going to start with this as is, is our number one principle, and I hope you're taking notes, parents, because here's the number one thing. You've got to get this. You're working yourself out of a job. That's it. If you can start with that principle, you are working yourself out of a job. And, and if we don't understand that, we're going to cause our kids a lot of problems along the way. When that nurse puts that baby girl in your hands, that granted we said it, she's going to be turning 12 sooner than you know it, but you are raising someone else's wife, someone else's mother. 
That's what we're doing. When that boy is put in your arms and you're leaving the hospital and thinking, I don't think they know what they're doing, giving this kid to me to take home, you are raising someone else's husband, someone else's dad. That, that's what you're doing. That's why we have child dedications because you get it. This is, your, this is a gift from you, God. I'm going to do everything I can as long as I can to fulfill what you've given me to do because they're yours. That's what the approach comes as our parenting because if we don't get that right and that little baby's going to turn 13, 16, 18 and we haven't been preparing them to be, we missed it. And that's where we've got to get that as parents. They're going to grow older. They're going to do it. I mean, you can sit on them, you can strap them down, they're just going to keep growing, and they get older. They're going to be exposed to the challenges and the pains of life. I mean, we can shelter them, we can bubble them, we can, we can do everything possible. They are going to face hard things. So are we preparing them for life? Not just spiritually, not just emotionally, practically. What do they know how to do when they leave? Can they do a little bit more than video games at 18? That would be a good thing to make sure your kids know how to put gas in the car, how to start, how to have a bank account, how to write their name, how to, I mean, again, it's crazy, crazy in the season of parenting that we had to navigate a season when the schools took out cursive writing. We had to spend time as parents teaching our kids how to write in cursive. Because we knew there's going to be a day they got to send their name on a piece of certificate or a bank account. Or like, again, well, I just don't teach that anymore. I guess it's not important. What does your kid need to succeed? You are the parent. You love them so much. Here's the problem. The tendency is that you, 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 you want to do it for them. You, you, instead of equipping them to become independent, and, and Missy's mom, love her to death, so guilty of this. I mean, building into, we never want you to leave. You have to have us. You can't ever do anything. I mean, that, that's not good parenting. You're trying to encourage and challenge and get them to a place that they're mature adults ready for life. So, parents, in everything, say everything. Everything we do, everything we say, we are producing stability strength, all those things, or we are producing insecurity, instability in our kid's life. And how we are emotionally, we're up and down, we're in and out. Does mom love dad anymore? Does, uh, I mean, again, we are, we are training our kids and building into, seeding into them security or insecurity, confidence or fear. We are seeding them all the time. That's why it's important. Every one of us, we're in the journey with Jesus becoming more engaged followers and learning how to be mature adults ourselves because we're imparting, we're leading. Kids are looking, come on. You know, we have kids in worship here. I love that, watching parents, but, but the rest of us, come on, these kids are watching. We're wanting them to worship. I mean, we're, we're trying to t- teach them. They're the church. Yeah. I don't know if I want to be the church. They're not happy. They're not excited. They don't worship. Like, like we are imparting Everything we do. So we, come on, I need to mature spiritually. I need to become a better version of relational equity, uh, relational strength, relational demonstration. I've got to get more level in my emotional complexion. I mean, like, I'm, I'm leading. And parents, sometimes we fail to remember everything we do, we're leading Our kids, we're setting the tone, we're setting the example of what matters in life. Well, mom and dad don't care about fill in the blank. Well, why should I care? Or mom and dad tell me to do this, but they don't. See, what we're doing, we're creating a culture of health and stability in our kids. And when you're journeying through something hard, you've got to decide how well you shelter them from your pain, your experience, but also how to lead them into learning from this season and becoming a better version of themselves. Because most of us, as parents, really the, the heart of it, we want our kids to have a better life than us. We want them to turn out better than us. Now, what happens too often, we, we try to push them 
the direction we think they should go. And I want to talk about that a little bit more in our series, but here's the next principle I want to hit real quick for us to, to guard against. If we're going to guard against the enemy's attacks and all different shapes and sizes, here's the way he comes internally. When we create a child-centered home. What do you mean by that, Steve? What, what? Talk to me about that. Because when you create a child-centered home, I'm just going to tell you, uh, later years, there's hell to pay. I mean, like, you're, you're, you're messing them up. You're not getting them ready for life because you create a, a culture where your kid is dictating what you do, what you don't do, where you go, what you don't do. I mean, like, the, well, well they, you got to jump and run every moment. They, they come, interrupt every conversation you have. And like, like, you just, you're not adulting because you've created a child-centered home that everything is about them. And I, I, I want you to really process this because you're good parents. You're a good parent. I'm not, I'm not this, this series, I'm not talking to parents that their kid dies in, in a, uh, a hot car outside while they're inside a hotel shooting up drugs. That's a whole different series. I'm talking to good parents. But what we do is we swing over here, and now we're going to make sure little Johnny has everything the rest of his life covered and taken care of because we don't want to be a bad parent. And we create a child-centered home. In our cultures, I know different generations parent in different ways and different things, but watching generations process, uh, you know, again, we get a newborn, we get in the process, and man, you want sleep, you want rest, and, but somewhere in there, we're, we're more focused on what the kid needs than how to bring them into life with us. Everything is about the kid, what I can do, what I can't do, where I can go, where I can't go. Bring them into it. Do you know parenting with a pastor position doesn't shut off? There's events, there's meetings, there's dinners. There, our kids, oh, we're just, they're, they're so tired. We just, no, we, we, we had to parent them into learning how to do people all the time. And that's challenging. Kids will tell you, it's hard. But we didn't let, oh, they got a schedule, they got to be in bed. No, we got service, we got this. Missy, getting the kids ready. I got to be there at the church. I think what I go down 4.30, start turning on all the air. And we, we, we're pastors at about 1,200 member church there in Arkansas. And like, I mean, all the stuff we do, well, we just did to bring our kids into this is what we do. We're in ministry. Our family is ministry. So here's what we do. Many meetings, I guarantee our kids were like, dear God, can we go home now? But they had learned how to be a part of what we do in our family dynamic. And again, being a child-centered home, it's so easy and so quick to shift into that. The child wants this. What do you do? Well, just, dear God, shut them up. Give it to them. And you're not on the same page in your parenting. Come on, husbands, wives, fathers, mothers. Kid throws a fit. The man something, boom, they get it, they get it. From a young age, they know, first and foremost, which of you to play, because they know who they can get it from. They know who will break first. And they will learn from what you teach them how to get what they want. Whenever a child wants it, throws a fit, demands, here they go. The parent jumps up, runs to it. Let me fix this, let me do this, let me get it. And you don't realize it. And I can tell you, and you still don't realize it, you've created a child-centered home. That is the dynamic that is your biggest problem. You've got to shift out of that. Because the problem is that little kid throwing the tantrum on the floor is going to be in first grade pretty soon. And if we don't teach them, train them, as we're going to talk about, get them to the place that they're ready, now we send them to kindergarten, and Miss Sherry's got 18 kids, 13 kids, that are all throwing tempers on the temper tantrum on the floor. How do you think that teacher can teach them if we're not sending them into that ready for that moment? Consistency. We've got to learn how to, before you know it, that child is going to be on a playground Potentially, someone in PE is going to roll a ball and they're either going to kick it and run to first or fall on their rear end and get laughed at. Parents, what are you setting them up to experience? Right. Right. Well, I just, I'm not into sports. 
Your kid's going to be in PE one day. Are you getting them ready for that moment to walk away? Look, yeah, yeah. Or they're the last kid ever picked every time. You're preparing them. What is their experience going to be? Because ultimately, the playground, the PE class is not going to revolve around everything they want. The ball team is not going to be about what they want. The job is not going to be about what they want. I mean, we go down the list. So fast forward. I mean, you just turn on the news any, any day of the week and you watch adults having temper tantrums because they don't get what they wanted from whatever. See, see, that's learned through the process. We've got to understand it's crazy, but the adult throwing the temper tantrum should have been handled in the shopping cart at two. Parents, we have got an awesome responsibility that God's given us of how we avoid the traps, the things, because when you look at the scope of life, I mean, 80, 100 years, somewhere in there is kind of the typical lifespan when you think about it. If you, I mean, you're approaching old, what, what, do, what do you fill in with that blank? But we use Ben and we say 18 years. Do you know how fast 18 years goes by? It's such a small window that we've been given the awesome responsibility to train the child before we send them out in the world. So what do we do? Again, everything tends to chaos. You've got to help form. Remember the wood. Remember the wood. They can turn rotten or they can become artwork. It's up to you what happens. It's not just automatic. The fact that you want to take them to someone's home and when they're when you're leaving, you might not get that conversation, but the, 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 the family you just left, the people you just left, they're like, dear God, we will never invite them again. You don't want that. So what are you doing to get your kids ready to go visit someone else's home? No, we don't, we don't do that. We don't jump on their furniture. We don't, we don't pull on their curtains. We don't climb. We don't. How being polite doesn't just show up at 10. Now, some personalities are more energetic than others. I get that. Again, everything, there's not a blanket statement. But you've got to teach them. You want your child to be kind. One, demonstrate it. Two, teach them how to be kind. Because it's going to come a moment, whether you have a single child or you have kids, they're going to have to learn how to share. Because the selfish nature in humanity is seen very early. You just get two kids and one toy sinful nature. Very few little kids, you know, I want you to have this toy. Have fun. I'll just watch you play. No, that, that is something that's never happened in a nursery. You know it if you have more than one kid. Like you're, you've got to teach them how to share. It doesn't just follow them. 17, they're polite. They're respectful. They know how to interact with authority. It just doesn't happen. Behavior is taught. Behavior is taught. The, the, the carving artwork. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive into something. And even if I don't get into the rest of this, I'll, I'll tie it into next week. Because the Holy Spirit, even we were singing that, Brian, just a minute ago. Holy Spirit, you do what you want to do. The Holy Spirit put in something in my heart today. Because here's the thing. What's taught? And I feel like I need to do this on a couple levels. But one thing that Missy did so good at a young age is she taught our kids how to love her the way she wanted to be loved. That They didn't have a chance to run through the room yelling, screaming, doing whatever, playing, beating up on each other's brother, Amber beating on both of them. I don't know. Like, like if they came in the room where Missy was, Whoa, 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 come back, come back, come back, come back. Come over here. Give me a hug. Kiss me on the forehead. Tell me you love me. Not just one time, not just once a week. Every time they came in the room, she taught them, this is how you love me as your mom. Now, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do two things with this, and it's going to challenge some of you all in the room. And it's going to be hard maybe for Missy to let me say this. Missy's greatest success in her entire life is raising three kids that love God, that love her, 
that still love people after pastoring 16 years. And I know for some of you are new, I'm praising God, you're coming in and you're gonna have a new culture with you and a new dynamic. But some of you women don't get what she's had happen through women in our church for 16 years. Women that should celebrate the fact there's a mom of the house that has such a beautiful relationship with her kids. Literally, there have been women in 16 years that have told her, I'm mad at you because I don't have what you have with your kids. There have been women, I'm ta- I just felt the Holy Spirit said, you need to stop. And this is Pastor Appreciation Month. I'm gonna appreciate the mom of this house. Because where this, we've said for 16 years, we're creating a, a safe place. Some of y'all's emails I sent, this is gonna be a safe place. And it's been safe for everybody but the pastor's wife. Women that have said, I've been avoiding you for weeks because I saw your kids doting on you. I'm mad at you. Women that have told her, I'm fantasizing about your husband with no thought this is her husband. I I mean, I can go, you, you have no idea what 16 years has done and I keep hearing women saying, I wish we had a women's ministry. I wish I had a women's ministry. I wish I had a women's ministry. Please, dear God, celebrate the mom of the house for once who's been over backwards to be an example to moms in this house. I mean, I'm just scratching the surface. Women in her, her, her three safe places, her house, her husband, her kids, been in her house making fun of her decorations, talking about how they're mad at her because their husband doesn't treat her the way her husband does. Like, dear God, she's not paid. She just wants to love people. I don't know if you noticed she hadn't taught in a while because that is a place that is hard to be because everybody's going to criticize everything you say. Most people will have a chance to get offended by it and they're going to take it out on you because of what's going on in their life. For her to get up on the stage and still want to do this after 16 years, I cannot believe I'm that lucky to have that kind of wife because most of our friends have bailed and quit when they've gone through what we have. We have literally talked to pastors' wives to ask them, do people do this to you? And it's hard to find other women that have gone through what she's gone through. When we planned this church, she had visions of conferences and all the women's ministry. What? I mean, we couldn't even have a women's ministry without women getting mad while I'm not in the group you wanted. I don't want to be a leader. I don't want to do this. Like, push back, push back. 16 years in 2020, God told her, I'm releasing you from having to carry the ministry of women in this house. So women, you want to see ministry in here? Come on, create honor in this house. But here's what the Holy Spirit told me to do. And this is, I can guarantee you, hard for you to hear, but I'm creating a safe place for my family moving forward in this ministry. Uh, We've gave our life to build something here. And I've watched pain after pain after pain. And this guy too, he stepped into some, some leadership in this house, stuff he's still working through that happened to him in younger years. In the church. So don't talk about church hurt to us. We get it. But here's what the Holy Spirit said, and this is why for pastor appreciation, God said stop, and I made sure I even shared this. I want people to see how we're gonna honor you right now. I want five women right now to stand up. She's gonna start, and I want you to speak life and encouragement over her right now. Five minutes, five women, stand up. Just stand up, you're starting. And the Holy Spirit said, it's time to pour life back into the mom of this house who's created a culture, an example, who everybody should be looking at. I can't, I don't know if I can number. I mean, it would be so small, a number of women that have taken her aside to ask her, how do you parent? How do you be a good wife? Pour into me. Most of what she gets is everybody else's frustration and anger and pain. 16 years. And I'm sorry, I know, I know we're new, but we're vulnerable here. We're, I, I'm creating, I'm building something here. And if you want to understand what I'm doing right now, I'm parenting a church. 
I'm training you. This is what you've produced in the mom of this house by pushback, 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 frustration, anger. I'm mad. I'm mad. I can't believe you have a good family. Dear God, what do you want out of your pastors? A bad family? Please create a bad example for us. And I'm pretty passionate about this, as you can see. Because I've watched what 16 years of her just following my call. What she's had to put up with and endure. So I feel strong on this. I knew if I got to a point that we didn't cover anything else and we're going to do this and we're going to have a last song if we can get through it, Brian, and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about parenting more. Pastor Appreciation. I want you to start, and you're going to speak life. I'm not saying any of this is going to change, and she's going to start women's ministry because God released her 16 years or whatever it was, three years ago, of frustration. God said, you're done. You don't have to carry this any longer in this house. So I need you to get it. Women mm, that have flat out told her, that they got close to her, befriended her to try to get close to me. Welcome to pastoring. You have no idea what y'all have created. Y'all meaning 16 years. Not, it's hard to, 16 years of women doing to her. I, I, I'm just, I'm blown away. She wants to get up there and lead worship. So we're gonna pour into you right now. And as the pastor of the house, I honor the gift and the example that you've set for this church for 16 years. You have no idea even what happened in Arkansas of how we had to leave and lose everything because a pastor's family was falling apart. I was the public face, so they couldn't attach my opinion because I was saying, here's who I think is causing the problem in your family. They took it all out on her behind the scenes for four months of hell. So when she has a hard time trusting people, it, it makes sense. So what you say is going to seed, it's not going to fix. But I want the women of this house to start loving the mom of this house right. And I guarantee you, honor being set back in this house, the spirit of God is going to start doing some things he hasn't been able to do. And I'm setting it right by the Holy Spirit's leading today. So, Tredessa, your top leadership, I want you to speak into her. Miss, Hopefully I can say something, but <laughs> I hate that you've walked through this for so many years. And man, I just want you to know that like for me, I am a safe place for you. That's a decision. I am a safe place for you. And I do honor you as somebody I've looked up to for however many years, 13, 14, however many it's been now. Man, I love you. And I have watched you be this mom that is so amazing and obviously as a mom of four, you know, coming on five kids, that so often to myself I like think, is this how Missy would do it? <laughs> is this what she would do? And the reason I do that is because I know you, first of all. And I know how you act towards me and how you love me. And you are not even old enough to be my mom, but the, the heart of a mother and the love of a mother. So I know I want to be like you in that way. But I also know because you have three amazing kids. Absolutely. And just like Steve has said, they are all so different, and yet they are all Jesus lovers, and they are all people lovers. And anytime I've come into contact with any of them, I feel loved and seen. And I know that that comes from you because I feel the same way 
when I'm with you. And so well done, first of all, <laughs> for such amazing kids. Well done, but also for the years that you have walked. And I know it's been hard, and that you could be very bitter. You could choose to live in bitterness. Absolutely. You could choose to not show up here. You could choose to say, Steve, I'm done, I'm out, <laughs> and you haven't. And that's amazed me. Because you have stayed soft to the Lord, because that's who you are. You are a soft, you are like this powerhouse of a woman. But there is a gentleness and a softness that you treat us all with that love and gentleness when you come near. And I was just thinking about, like, anytime I interact with you, that you carry this, like, atmosphere that's almost like this tangible thing. It's like, if I'm just standing next to you, it's just going to get on me. <laughs> just this love. And you're going to say the things that need to be said, but you're going to say them with such love and grace. And I don't know how you keep doing that Absolutely. when you're getting that pushback for years and years and when you're getting people who, who don't want to receive it. I'm just telling you, I receive it and I want it. That I look to you and when you encourage me in parenting or in marriage, or I take that stuff so deep and I keep it and I think about it because I look and I say, yeah, I want to be like her. And so I honor you, and I'm not going to take a lot of time. I could go on and on and on, but I love you, and I'm sorry for what you have walked through. I, I want to speak on behalf of the years of ministry as much as I can, that I'm sorry that your gifting hasn't been received, and I'm sorry that you've been attacked, and I'm sorry that because of your love and your gentleness, it's been easy for people to come and dump on you. Absolutely. And... They know they're going to find love, and you give it anyway. I can't say I would respond that way. <laughs> but they know Missy is a safe place for love. But unfortunately, that has made it not a safe place for you always. And I am praying in this season that that can change for you, that you know that when you walk in this place, that it will be a safe place for you and that you are surrounded by people who love you, who receive you, who see you and will pour back into you too, will not use you like a mat to wipe their feet on and then just leave. That won't cause damage and then just go. But we'll see you and love you. But I love you and I honor you. So good. Pass it to somebody else. Brian. Um, first... The reason I come to get hugs from you every week when you're here <laughs> is because everybody could use a little more Missy in their life because you are a safe place for a lot of us. And I'm sorry that it hasn't always been that for you, but we honor and appreciate you so very much. And um, this isn't making it okay but the, I got two scriptures that came to mind. And the first one was that we are the aroma of Christ to, among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, a fragrance from death to life, and to the other, a fragrance from life to life. And so as God's ambassador, you are this aroma, and it's pleasing. But when somebody has something in them, then to them, you don't smell good, but that doesn't change the fact that you are a pleasing aroma to God. That's, that's their issue, and they're wrong. But you are still a pleasing aroma. And that's why, for me, I look forward to it. I love Missy Hugs. I love being around you because it's pleasing to me. And um, the other one is just to remember that when you're blessed, when people insult and persecute and falsely say all kinds of evil against you, because of Christ. They're not doing it because of Missy. They're doing it because there's an offense to them. And you rejoice. I know it's hard. And be glad because great is your reward in heaven. And all of your tears he sees. And he honors and he rewards that because you are doing it for him. And you put up with all the stuff that you shouldn't have to for him. And he sees that. He does not ignore that at all. He, he, you, your reward is going to be great. And um, 
I still think it needs to change here now. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, please know that he sees and he knows and he understands. And he loves you and he honors you. And we do too. Not one for speaking, but <laughs> um, I think it's really important that you guys are being vulnerable and real. I've been in so many churches where everything is swept under the rug and everything everyone puts on a fake smile, and um, it's infuriating. <laughs> uh, as someone who's gone through similar things, and I had a grandmother who was a pastor's wife who um, was not treated well, uh, I do honor you, and I just think that like Tradessa said, I wouldn't be here if I were you, if I had experienced the things that I have a choice, some choice words for. <laughs> uh, I just, I think that you're brave and the fact that you guys are being vulnerable and even Derek, like that vulnerability helps others like myself who are always also guarded be more vulnerable. So good. So, um, and not feel like I just have to put on a fake smile and don't, you know, have to have it all together. So I appreciate the vulnerability, and I just appreciate that every time I see you, you are smiling and um, just warm, but just know that you, know, you don't always have to put on a, a, a face. And if you do for pain, I get that, but um, we're here for you also. So thank you. Missy, you are Jesus to people. You represent Jesus in such a way that, as Cherie pointed out, and, and, and because you love like he did, you represent him. Some people can't handle it. But right now, I break off the curses that have been spoken to you, against you. I break off every word that has been spoken against you in how you love your husband, how you love your children, how you love your church, how you love Jesus. I break those curses off right now in the name of Jesus. I send them to the waste places never to return again. I put up an iron shield around you that will bounce those things off a hedge of protection so that they can no longer land on you. And you will receive a lightness and a joy that comes even in the midst of their attempts because they are broken off right now in Jesus' name. So good. Psalm 24, verse 3 through 6. Who can possibly ascend the mountain of the eternal? Who can stand before him in sacred spaces? Missy can only those who have, whose hands have been washed and hearts made pure. Men and women who are not given to lies or deception. Missy. The eternal will stand close to you, Missy, with blessing and mercy at hand. And the God who redeems will right what has been wrong. So good. Missy, you are the people who chase after him. I declare that over you. And Isaiah 54, starting in verse 12, and it's, it's about Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the home of the king. The king dwells in you, so this applies to you as well. I will de decorate your towers with rubies, and your gates will sparkle with all manner of precious gems. Costly jewels will adorn the, the entire wall that circles your precincts. Every one of your children, the people who call you home, not just your own, but those you have ministered to as your children in this church family. Every one of your children, the people who call you home, will be students of the eternal. Oh, they'll be so happy and live in peace. This time, you will be founded and grounded on right thought, speech, and action, which you have been which you have been and you continue to do, and no one will trouble you, abuse, or oppress you. We declare that in the spirit realm and in the physical realm right now in Jesus' name over Missy and Steve and their children. If a nation marches against you, know that I am not behind it. Any foolish enough to challenge you will fall to you. I have created the blacksmith who readies the fire and forges weapons for wars, and I have created the destroyer to ravage and ruin, but no instrument forged against you will be allowed to hurt you. 
never again. We declare that in Jesus' name. And no voice raised to condemn you will successfully prosecute you. It's that simple. This is how it will be for the servant Missy of the eternal. I will vindicate her. Missy, he sees you, and I see you. And on behalf of all the women here, I ask for your forgiveness for those that have wronged you. It was not okay, and you do not deserve it. And I ask on everyone's behalf for your forgiveness. I thank you for all that you breathe into every woman around you, the families around you, Thank you for teaching me how to show up and not run, teaching me how to be a parent, teaching me how to be a woman of God, for teaching me how to forgive, for walking through things when I was selfish. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for teaching all of us. You are a mighty woman of valor. You are a mighty woman of valor. You are his chosen one. You are strong, and you are beautiful, and you are wise. You are an amazing mother, an amazing wife, an amazing daughter and sister. You teach us how to love like Jesus. You walk through the hard stuff with us. And I am here to walk through the hard stuff with you. I see you and I love you. I pray blessing over you. I declare that you are going to see his goodness in the land of the living. That what you have sown, yeah, you're going to see in heaven too. The impact that right here you will reap. This is a season of reaping into what you have sown. This is a season of healing. And this is a season of love and safety. And I thank you for who you are, and I love you. That's good. See you. That's good. My first thought is, it's been a blessing to launch our daughters into the world together. Because I always know that your hug is behind someone who understands but what God wants to tell, tell you today through me is every time you step on that stage, whether it is to practice during our production or whether it's to host or whether it's to teach us a lesson, the image I always get from him is you at home preparing for hours, sitting at his feet, learning from him, and it doesn't matter what other people see. God sees all the time and effort that you have been learning from him. And that's all I see when you step on that stage is you being a vessel for Jesus to pour through. And all the hours and all the preparation and all the learning from him, that's what I see every time you step on that stage. So I'm not a good speaker either. But I have to say, in the past two weeks, um, it always happens when I'm riding my bike. For some reason, I think, I wish I had a counseling session with Missy. And then I'm like, do I contact Ginger to get to Missy? Or how do I? But then I'm like, no, no, no. Like, she has enough on her plate. But what my heart is, that I'm like, I want to be like Missy. And you have, I just has been so loving and just are always breathing words of life into me. And so it breaks my heart that you've had to go through that. And I had no idea that you did. And so I'm sorry about that. But I'm just very thankful for you. And I have to say, like, when you have preached the stories, like, they have helped me through life. Like how you've talked about how God's provided when you didn't think you were going to have food or something like that. And so when I'm in a situation, I'm like, Missy got through it. God provided medically, like with some medical things. I'm like, Missy declared against that. Like, so I have used you for an example, and I haven't voiced it to you, so you'd have no idea. But so thank you for having us speak life into her because it's not something I've ever thought to do because 
I thought your love tank was filled. <laughs> um, but just know, like, almost every day I think about you, and I think, I wish I had a counseling session with her to help me go through what I'm going through, because she knows. <laughs> so just thank you for being you, and hopefully this will just kind of be life-changing, and we'll start on a new path. Absolutely. But, thank you. And Theo, I want you... Uh, scripture talks about a child rising up calling their mom blessed you've seen front row the pain the heartbreak the disappointment but you're also the product of her faithfulness I want you to speak a blessing from your spirit over her and then we're going to pray it's 11.33 we're going to wrap up we're going to let everybody go. We're going to come back. We're going to pick up, keep being church. But I want you to speak over her as the fruit. The, I don't know what that music word is, magnum opus, or the, the, you're the product of her greatest achievements on this planet. I still walk through my house. I still live at home. I'm 21. And I happily, happily still live at home. I'm not in a rush to go anywhere because they're also my safe space. My mom is one of my best friends. And one of the most like impactful things she said to me growing up um, I don't remember when she said this, but it, it's always just stuck with me as I became an adult. It was, um, she needs to be my mom. She doesn't need to be my friend. But if she gets to be my friend, praise God. And when I became an adult, I realized, like, they're not in charge of me anymore. They're helping me. They're, they're, they're coaching me. And so how do I be coachable now? And how do I be your friend? I still instinctually kiss her on the forehead every time I walk by. Because I love you. And I'm so excited because where I'm at in life, I'm obviously looking towards marriage, right? So is my brother, right? He's almost there. Hopefully. Bring him, Lord, bring him. Right? But when I, when I get to that space, it's, it's not a selfish thing for me. It's not, oh, I can't wait to find my person to go do whatever. It's I can't wait to expand my family. I can't wait to partner with my mom's biggest dream, which was us. It's beautiful. Me and my siblings are my best friends. We're your biggest dream. So good. I can't wait to keep it going. That's good. That's good. I want you to go and stand up. I don't, I don't know of a better way the Holy Spirit could teach you something today of what it looks like to be able to shift something. 
And let the Holy Spirit be the helper that he is. So ladies, I, I appreciate your obedience to that, the honor. I'm going to ask you to live it. Moving forward, live that. Let it not be words. Don't deceive yourself. Honor the mom of this house. Pull on the giftings that is in her. I'm going to ask you to just stretch your hands. I'm going to pray over her. I'm going to pray over you guys. I'm getting feedback, Christopher, from something. I just don't want to squeal. Holy Spirit, thank you for being the teacher of the church. This is family. This is real life. This is the tension between ideal and the real right here. It's a challenge to walk that. And Jesus, you did not shy away from the tension. We live in that tension. God, you teach us how to shift a culture, to shift what we allow, to shift what we're building together. And God, we say, just as what has been broken off her, no more will dishonor be the legacy of the women's of this house with Missy. Babe, I just see in the spirit, can't see faces. I can't, I can't like quali- qualify who. But I just see a certain number of, of women that are just, just it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a perimeter encircling you in the spirit. And they won't be just a safe place in word. Your heart, your soul will know they're safe. Holy Spirit, you're leading us, a church, into this next season. And we're, we're going to build something that matters in this community, on this earth. We hadn't done this for 16 years to play church. We're building the kingdom together. And God, we say honor will be a key factor of this house moving forward. Honor for one another that we outdo each other with honor. Let that be the competition of this house. How well we can honor one another in this house. Holy Spirit, we honor you. We honor Brian. Brian, I just sense Holy Spirit breathe life over whatever he's got right now on his plate in his life. Job, relationships, family dynamics, I I don't know, whatever's going on right now. He is a gift that you have brought to seed into our church family and atmosphere today. I just say yes to open doors ahead of him in the name of Jesus, whatever it is. Whatever's been the resistance, God, it's, 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 he's pushing through, moving through into the other side of that. In the name of Jesus. And I just, it's the word release. We release. As a brother in the kingdom of God, we release what is in him to move forward into what is next. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Last thought. Holy Spirit, for our kids' workers, we deeply love them. And we honor them today as they've held the kids over. God, speak a blessing over them as they have refreshed those kids. They and their souls will be refreshed in the name of Jesus, we pray. I know this has been different today, but we just had church. New families, we're inviting you into being a real body, a real church with people that do life together. So I'm encourage you, give somebody a hug, tell them you love them. We'll actually get back to a parenting series, teaching next week, don't worry. But the Holy Spirit stopped and highlighted the mom of this house and what needed to happen in her. Some of your women, before you leave, you need to to love on her. Y'all are dismissed. See you back next week. Thank you for watching the Highway YouTube channel. We trust that God spoke to you right where you are. Please take the time to hit the subscribe button to follow us each week. And be sure to share it with a friend. You can support the ministry by heading over to our church website at highwaycommunity.com. Look for the donate tab and help us continue to reach our world with the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. God bless and have a wonderful week.